on the 30th anniversary of the Fields Institute, we thought it would be nice to pay tribute to the Fields Institute's namesake, John Charles Fields, by taking a brief look at who he was, what he studied, and why did we name the whole institute after him? John Charles Fields was a Canadian mathematician born in Hamilton, Ontario, who was instrumental in bringing mathematicians together at a time when there was a great divide left over from World War I. After the war, tensions were high between a number of European nations and the International Math Union, the IMU, decided to exclude Germany, Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, and Turkey from its membership. This caused a great rift between members. Some felt math and politics should remain separate, while others agreed with the IMU's decision. Because tensions were still so high in Europe, Fields proposed Toronto as the site of the 1924 Congress of Mathematicians. Even though it kept some of the exclusion rules, Fields was able to approach mathematicians from around the world and convince them that the Congress was worth saving despite political differences. In order to support European mathematicians who wanted to come to North America, he began an active fundraising campaign that was so successful, he even had money left over to follow through on another one of his big dreams. Sometimes referred to as the Nobel Prize of Mathematics, the Fields Medal is given out every four years to a group of mathematicians under the age of 40 who have made significant contributions to the field of math. The first medals were handed out in 1936. Sadly, Fields passed away in 1932 and didn't get to see his dream come to fruition. Interestingly, Fields believed that the medal should not be named after anyone and should have no writing or language on it to ensure that it was truly global. Yet, those in the mathematics community decided to name the medal after him. And though the medal itself does not bear his name, it does contain a little bit of writing including the Latin phrases, meaning rise above oneself and grasp the world, the year 1933 written in Roman numerals, the name Archimedes written in Greek, and again in Latin, these words, meaning mathematicians gathered from the entire world have awarded this prize for outstanding writings. Of course, Fields was also a mathematician himself who studied the field of algebraic functions or the study of polynomial equations and their roots. This is his thesis from John Hopkins University. We've made a much more detailed video explaining what it is that Fields studied. But what's important to note here is that the study of algebraic functions involves a beautiful interplay between different areas of mathematics and allows mathematicians to solve and understand a variety of other concepts. As we'll see in a moment, this is a great representation of who Fields was in his administration of bringing people together and bringing different areas of mathematics together. What stands out most about J.C. Fields is actually his status as one of math's greatest administrators. And while his math research was substantial, his legacy is one of bringing people and math concepts together. John Charles Fields passed away in 1932, and the Fields Institute wasn't established until 1992, 60 years later. So why name the Institute after him? Well, according to founding member Carl Bean, as the Fields Institute was being established, there were several planning meetings. At one such meeting at our house, various names for the proposed new institute were discussed. Should it be called the Southern Ontario Institute for Mathematics? The Ontario Mathematics Institute? My wife, Elaine McKinnon Ream, jumped up and suggested that the Institute be named for John Charles Fields, who had been born in Hamilton, taught for over three decades at the University of Toronto, and moreover was well known throughout the world for having established the Fields Medal. The Fields Institute was also built on many of the principles that John Charles Fields himself believed, including that the field of mathematics should be as broad as possible and to incorporate as many areas as it could. It's the reason the Institute has centers of research in things like health, finance, modeling, and education, and it has connections to many other fields, including smart villages, machine learning and EI, and much, much more. As Elaine McKinnon-Ream writes regarding the 1924 Congress, 
This he did by defining mathematics as broadly as possible and as inclusively as possible, including talks on actuarial science and statistics, forestry, astronomy, mechanics, ballistics, naval architecture, economics, radio telegraphy, geophysics, aeronautics, mining engineering, and the aurora borealis, to mention only a few. His broad definition of pure and applied mathematics corresponds closely to the vision of the founders of the Fields Institute and of those who have followed the trail of mathematical research wherever it has led over the past quarter century. Elaine mckinnon Ream also writes that during John Charles Fields' 30 years teaching at the University of Toronto, he walked many of the streets surrounding where the Fields Institute now sits. And even though there are 60 years between when John Charles Fields died and the Fields Institute was born, the connection between the two seemed meant to be. So naming the Fields Institute after John Charles Fields seemed to be a logical decision. So that's a little bit about John Charles Fields, the man, his beliefs, his mathematics, how he established a medal to honor mathematicians, and how, 60 years after his death, he inspired the naming of a mathematical institute. We're happy that 30 years later, the Fields Institute is still here doing amazing work and being inspired by the work of its namesake, John Charles Fields, and striving to make mathematics as inclusive and accessible as possible.